Hey, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Sharice, and this is Spirit Soul Sense Information for Your Soul. And today I would like to talk to you about how to identify cult things, cult ish, and the difference between a cult and a religion. I want this to help you make more broader decisions in terms of problem solving and identifying truth tellers versus scammers. If you're interested, please keep watching. Give this video a like, support my channel for more videos like this. All right, so let's start with the definition of uh, religion. I'm, I'm doing basic Google searches. I'll have references linked in the description box. So the belief in and worship of a superhuman power or powers, especially a god or gods, religion can also be defined as human beings' relation to that which they regard as holy, sacred, absolute, spiritual, divine, or worthy of special reverence. It is also commonly regarded as consisting of the way people deal with ultimate concerns about their lives and their fate after death. Why people created religion, okay? Let's go over, I also wanted to include the definition for a church. A church is a public building or place used for worship, particularly Christian worship services and other religious activities. Churches can be simple or ornate, and traditional Christian architecture often features a cross shape in the plain, in the plain view. The word church can also be used to refer to the buildings of other religions, such as mosques and synagogues. I want to drive home the point that religion is made up. It's one of the ways that people have created to explain the world, the laws of the universe, and why we exist. I also want to differentiate a religion that has a lot of rules attached to it that a lot of people agree to that are mostly pushing you in the direction of God from a religious sect and then a cult. So a religious sect, a religious sect can be considered a cult if its beliefs differ from the larger group's belief system in a way that causes a schism, just a difference. For example, the Christian counter cult movement considers a Christian sect to be a cult if its beliefs are not in line with the Bible or if it denies what it views as essential Christian teachings. Cults and sects are both religious organizations, but they differ in their origins and primary deity. Cults are groups that follow unorthodox niche religious, philosophical, and spiritual beliefs. Usually it's just like one that they hyper-focus on, one or some, many, one that they hyper-focus on. They are often led by a charismatic leader who isolates members from society and uses psychological manipulation and pressure to dominate them. Sex are divisions that form within a major religion due to belief tensions. A cult can have derogatory connotations in English-speaking countries and is often used as an ad hominem attack against groups with different practices or beliefs. I purposefully searched, are there good cults? Because Cults can be very similar to religious sex, sex, and not all cults isolate their followers or try to manipulate them. Some say that they are both benign and negative cults and that some cults can be empowering or have positive aspects. As a person who has Googled, read the books on a lot of the major religions of the world, I understand that not everyone understands what is happening in other religions. I've also read up on mysticism and the different ways that people have found meaning in life. And so I'm not one of those people who will just say a cult is bad, even though I understand the derogatory parts of a cult, right? A cult. And just because they have it here, benign cults are cults that don't harm their followers. Empowering cults, some cults can empower women, such as the Osho movement, which encourages women to take leadership positions, and paganism, which honors the goddess. Uh, positive aspects of some cults can offer a sense of community, feedback, and linear progression, right? This sort of growth and spiritual evolution that most people are looking for. Let's go into how cults and religions are similar. What they have in common may be reason to conflict the two, why some people might think they're similar. And I don't know if you've ever been to a church and felt like you were at a cult, because I definitely have been. I do not mean to speak negatively of people who are of this belief system, but I just want to use this as an example of a church that can often feel like a cult. So Jehovah's Witnesses, if you've ever seen them come to your house or if you've ever read up on some, what some of their beliefs are there's a lot of rigidity in their belief system and their principles 
and a lot of harm. This is one of the groups that people have said a lot of harm has come from. Similar to Scientology. These are religions, right? But there is so much negativity swirling around them. It does not mean that people have not been helped by this practice, but they're kind of cultish. I know for Jehovah Witness in particular, the not accepting blood transfusions and the hyperfixation on the end times are coming, the end times are coming, when in the greater scheme of the Bible, you know that nobody knows when the end times are coming. And so it's not really necessary to focus on the end times because you can stunt your life. I've heard stories of people say it doesn't even make sense to go to college because the end times are coming because of how much they've preached it. Their a lot of their followers have internalized that there's no point to doing much of anything. What they have in common may be reason to conflate the two, a charismatic leader. Buddhism and Christianity are both named after a charismatic leader. Did you know that? <laughs> Islam, originally called Mohammedanism, is also named after its leader. Religions and cults often follow a leader who claims divine or at least special access to different models of knowledge and revelations. Uh, just throwing it out there, I don't consider myself to be Christian, but I love Jesus. He's the homie. Many are martyred. Jesus of Nazareth was famously crucified. Joseph Smith, Mormonism's founder, was lynched, leaving Brigham Young to lead followers west. Have you been to a Mormon church? Okay. And days is another consistent theme in cults and religions, both new and old. Nirvana, heaven, Zion, or outer space are a guiding principle in these scriptures. As an aside, I randomly found a video on YouTube years ago, maybe two or three years ago, where this lady was talking about the mothership outside of Earth. People need to find meaning in life. I understand. In the middle of the 19th century, economic desperation led the new religious movements. Life on Earth is awful, they said. The world is going to end. I mean, people, <laughs> I love the Witcher. He said, I've lived through like three end of, supposed end of times. Nobody knows when the world is going to end. I really think, you know, we're all going to be enlightened beings before, you know, Earth ends. And but that's like multiple millennia from now. I think hundreds of millions of billions of years from now. But nobody really knows. Okay, now let's go over what generally makes cults and churches different. But I also want to point out there are pastors of very well-known churches and established religions that play on some of the things that are mostly associated with cults because they're moving through fear, right? They're not moving through God or love. They're trying to control people or manipulate people instead of actually trying to help people, like give them the roadmap to God. You don't need church or religion to find God, but because we're all just wild out here not knowing, it's a really good framework for finding God without having to do all that legwork. If you meditated for two hours every day, you would not need to go to church. You, would, you probably wouldn't want to go to church, but who's meditating? There are some people that do, but who's meditating two hours every day to find God? But I do encourage 15 minutes a day of sitting in silence because silence is the language of God to strengthen your bond with God. Okay. Differences. Isolation. Cults can isolate members from their friends and family. Control. Cults can closely control their members, punishing questions or doubts. I'm thinking of Waco. Yeah. And all those men who really just wanted to have sex with children. It was wild. Sacrifices. Cults can demand excessive sacrifices and money from their followers. Reminds me of that pastor who swindled money from his elderly patrons. Accountability. Cults can be authoritarian and lack accountability. Financial disclosure. Cults may not provide meaningful financial disclosure about their budget or expenses. Loyalty. Cults can demand inappropriate loyalty from their leaders. Family. Cults can dishonor the family unit and separate you from people who are important. Criticism, cults can have zero tolerance for criticism or questions, fears. Cults can have unreasonable fears about the outside world, such as evil conspiracies or persecutions. Beliefs, cults can have beliefs that are considered extreme or dangerous by many people. So generally speaking, most cults are not loving. They are not trying to get you to be kinder to yourself or to other people. Their goal is to control you, aka scammers. People who, although some cult leaders may be suffering from mental illness or all kinds of things, and they may really believe what they're saying, but they're not bringing you into a place that feels safe or peaceful or calm or loving. 
On the other hand, most religions and most of the churches, synagogues, mosques of the world are led by people who actually love God, the one true God, and want you to also find that love, to find that forgiveness for yourself or other people so that you can be a better person in the world. There are always going to be, because we're humans, people who are outliers and people who, you know, might be an imam or might be a, a, a priest who is doing actual harm to people. There might be in some more than others because, you know, I'm starting to think about Catholicism and how the rigidity of it, the rules of it, oh my goodness, that can lead people to self-condemnation and to fear God versus to embrace the love of God that then attracts people, attracts men, let's be specific, that can attract men who are the priests who then harm other people, including children. That was a conspiracy that they, that's real. That, like... I know there are, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I promise you I'm not a conspiracy theorist. One of the things that I believe and, and try to do more of in my life is live with love and kindness and fun and joy. And so I think a lot of people who are conspiracy theorists are preoccupied with the negativity, with the fear and exposing other people. And I'm more so like, there are a lot of things that exist, right? There really were a group of priests, many, many priests, and the people who found out at the top, stopping the information from coming out. That That is true. That is true. That doesn't make Christianity or Catholicism as a whole something negative. I think there are so many people that have found solace and peace in Catholicism, in the rituals, in going to mass, in seeking forgiveness from the priests and all of that, that that way of life is comforting to them. So if it makes you feel good, I would say do more of it. If it causes you confusion or frustration, then don't do more of it, right? There are these fire and brimstone pastors that just want you to be fearful of the world. They want you to condemn other people. They want you to judge people harshly and negatively and somehow make you out to be better than them because you found the way, the truth, and the light through Jesus. But I promise you, Jesus would want you to treat other people with kindness, with love. He lived his life as an example of that from you know, I want to say more from the people who are selling them their bodies uh, to, to people who were stealing, to people who were lying. Jesus had love for those people. And you don't have to approve of what these people are doing in order to love them, even if you love them from a distance. But I really want you to ask yourself, are the people, are the leaders, are, are you know, the investment person or, you know, the, the spiritual teacher over there, are they moving in love? Are they encouraging you to also be closer to love or are they trying to get you to buy something from them or be dependent on them versus dependent on God and God's love for directing your life let me know if you have any questions I feel like that was a lot of information about a lot of things I hope it made sense and was clear to you about some of the differences and most of all I hope you take away I want you to love yourself. I want you to love other people. I want you to be kind to yourself. I want you to be kind to other people. And whatever way you find meaning in life, if you are able to do those things, I think you're on the right path. But ask God, you know? But I think you're on the right path. <laughs> Leave a comment. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos about this because I love talking about God. <laughs> and thank you for watching. <laughs>